Number five from the 2006 Higher Maths paper one. Stationary point on a graph. Seven marks for this. Seven marks for finding the stationary point, which is its singular, the stationary point on this graph and determining its nature. So how do we get these seven points? Well, you'll get stationary points when it's stopped moving. The gradients tell you that. There'll be a stationary point where it's stopped moving up and going down, or stopped going down and going up, or some amalgamation of the two, where it temporarily pauses and then carries on up again, or the other way around. Those are the stationary points you're looking for. A maximum turning point, a minimum turning point, a rising point of inflection, remember the x-axis goes that way, a falling point of inflection. Look for which of these four cases applies here. You'll get it from the gradients. What's happening to the gradient before and after each of them? That indicates exactly what's happening. Positive the negative, maximum turning point. Negative gradient, positive gradient, minimum. Positive, positive, rising point. Negative, negative, falling point. So the first part is, give me the gradients, that'll be the derivative, please. So what's f dashed of x? Now, as soon as you write that, as soon as you write f dashed of x, as far as the marking scheme's concerned here, that's your first mark. I can't do any more. One mark out of seven. Now differentiate this. Now notice this is a function of a function. I do something to x and then I take the result and do something else to it. So starting from the outside and working in, if I had something to the power five and differentiated with respect to that something, it would become five times that thing to the power four. So it's going to be five times that thing to the power four. Then you look inside. It's a 2x minus 1. So now I multiply by the derivative of that inner function. And the derivative of this is just 2. So times 2. Which gives me 10 times 2x minus 1 to the power 4. Now that would be the second mark, except the second mark comes at this point before the tidying up simply differentiating the outer function and then multiplying by the derivative of the inner function gives you the second mark. But you'll need to tidy it up anyway. Get rid of that. Now, that's two marks out of the seven. Now, the next part would be, how would you identify a stationary point? A stationary point means that the gradient at that point has to be zero. Now, to put it back in again, at that point, the gradient the derivative is zero, no matter which type of point it is. That's worth the mark. Now the next part is finding x. So that means that 10 times 2x minus 1 to the power 4 should equal zero, just putting that back in here. That's not worth the mark. Finding x is worth the mark. Because there's no work to be done here, it's fully factorised. You could divide by 10, it would make no difference, because 10 can't be 0. That's fully factorised, and the only way that that expression could equal 0, well, 10 can equal 0, so it must be this bracket that equals 0. That means that 2x minus 1 equals 0, or, in particular, x must equal a half. That's mark number 4. Now, the question did say, what's the stationary point? That means you need the y-coordinate then. Well, the y-coordinate will be the value of the function at a half. The y-coordinate will be the value at a half. Well, that hasn't changed. That's still a zero in the middle. I'll put in the working for it. That'll be two times a half minus one to the power five. Well, of course, that's the same as this. That just comes to zero. So that means the y-coordinate is zero. That's a mark. That's the fifth mark. So this stationary point is the point a half zero. Of course, it might not look like that. To find out what it looks like, I'll need to find out what happens to the gradient before it and after it. I'll need a nature table. Now, sometimes you can use the second derivative to determine the nature of a stationary point. That's differentiating it one more time because the second derivative would be the rate of change of the gradients. How are the gradients changing? If the gradients were slowing down, that would be a negative rate of change. And of course, that would give you a maximum turning point. The only problem with that is, if the rate of change of the gradients was zero, 
it would mean you would have a point of inflection. And the second derivative certainly tells you you've got a point of inflection, but it won't tell you what type you've got. To find the type, we just have to find the gradient before and after again. So you'd as well just finding the gradient before and after. So a nature table. A nature table simply means, I know something happens at x equals a half. Here's x. What's the gradient before it and after it? What's f dash x before it and after it? Now you could just put a wee arrow that way, or you could put a wee sign that says less than a half and greater than a half. I'm not sure how. I tend to just put a wee arrow, but if you like, you could say less than a half and you could say greater than a half. I tend to just put a wee arrow. But I know that the derivative, I know that f dash of x is zero there. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can do it numerically by choosing a number. But you don't need to choose numbers if you've got a factorised expression. It's simple when you've got a factorised expression. Because after all, all you want are the signs, not the actual numerical values. If I didn't have a factorised expression, I'd have to resort to a numerical method of choosing a number before and choosing a number after. So here you might choose 0 and 1, for instance, which work quite quickly, I suppose. But with a factorised expression, it's quite easy. And in this case, it's trivial, because you'll notice, no matter what I put for x, a power 4 is going to make it a positive number. Even if x is a negative number, when I do power 4, it's going to be positive. So apart from the case when it equals 0, any other answer has to be positive. Now you do that with no calculation at all because you've got this factorised expression. If that wasn't a power 4, if it was power 3, then I would just need to consider the fact that when x is a half, that comes to 0. So if I make x a little bit less than a half, it's going to be smaller than 1, and the whole thing will go negative. If I make x bigger than a half, the whole thing is going to be bigger than 1, so it's going to go positive without numbers. But in this case, it was easy. Power 4 meant it was positive, positive. And then a little shape at the bottom here. That means its gradient was going up, it was going along, and then it was going up again. Well, that's a rising point of inflection. So now I can finish off the question. What have I got here? I've got a rising point of inflection at a half zero. Now, those are the two final marks. Need this nature table? Again, you can use the second derivative when you've got nice turning points. The second derivative will identify a point of inflection but won't tell you what type it is. So in this particular case here, you've got a one mark for the nature table. You get no marks if you do the second derivative because you've just got to revert to this afterwards to find its nature anyway. You've got one mark for the nature table and then a mark for the final statement which again comes from the nature table. And there's the seven marks altogether. Quite a nice, quick little question.